Okay. Are you ready to start on the project? Which or the case it? study as, as uh, it's actually called. Sometimes I call it a project. Sometimes I call it a case study. Um, I think we have probably maybe some other people will join us. If any of you are in Ken's um, tax class that starts at 545, you're good to go late, he said. He knows that we're holding this class, so. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's do it then. Hey, Philip. So in the content area, there's a folder that says start here, January data and background data. It's really important that you start at the beginning on all of these. I'm going to run through everything in here. Then we'll talk about the general due dates and stuff like that. Um, we'll talk about the tutor and then I'll open it up for questions. So if you have questions as we go along, feel free to interrupt me but it might be that I will answer your question before I'm finished. Okay, so general information. Really what you're doing here is you're starting another company. I will be sending you a QuickBooks invite as soon as this call is over for a new company to set up. And that new company will be a bakery and restaurant. These are actual company date. This is actual company data we're going to use here from a real company that's no longer in business. You are taking over for a bookkeeper that had done everything manually on paper and in Excel, and you're going to take that data and move it to QuickBooks Online. So this is not a new company. This is a company that's already been in existence, and you're going to have to enter opening balances and figure out the best way to do that. Well, you won't have to figure it out. I'll walk you through every step of it. You'll be given a monthly packet of items. And, and in, the, in the accounting world, we call that PBC, provided by the client. So you get a monthly packet and you'll use everything in that packet to prepare the monthly reports that need to be done. There's a lot of hints and tips and general advice here. You can read through these on your own. I'm not going to read them all to you. But the one thing that I will emphasize is, and I think most of you have learned this lesson, that dates are really important. It's so easy. It's going to, it's so easy to put the wrong year in because everything in this project is from 20, dated 2018. And it's going to be even harder for you because you're doing it in spring and a lot of the transactions are going to be January, February, March, April, May. So you're going to be doing the month in the month that it's happening on QuickBooks. So be very careful with the dates. There's more than one way to enter or prepare or classify items. <clears throat> I will be looking and I'll be doing the grading. This is not going to be an automated system grading. I will be manually grading every Excel document. So be patient with me. I, I'm actually gotten pretty good at it, so it doesn't take me too long. Um, when I grade it, I will also put in the Excel document the feedback, what the number should be and what I think your problem is. And I will upload that to the feedback area where you submitted the assignment. So you're not going to be left in the dark like you are with the textbook feedback where it just says it's wrong, right? Tells you it's wrong. Taylor. Is it going to be like the textbook where every case study like corresponds with the last, the one before, or will it be like a new one every month? It's not a new one every month. It's that's a really good question. It's the same company. We're doing their data from January through June. So you can't get anything wrong. If you get it wrong, you must fix it before you move on. Otherwise, your final product will be wrong. Cindy? Can we go through the book to, if we forgot how to do something, can we go back and look at the book to see our examples? Exactly. You Yes, you can do that. Your book is still available. Fantastic. 
but you're going to find that we're using QuickBooks in a different manner than the textbook. We will not be using the bills and the pay bills, and we won't use any of that. We're doing after the fact accounting, which is what a lot of bookkeepers do. Okay. You're given a packet of stuff. It's already happened. You don't have to enter every vendor's address and phone number. And, you know, there's a lot less of that work. Good questions. Anybody else? Kayam? Yeah. Um, so is it going to be like kind of like the textbook in the um, sense that we can see the figures before submitting something? Like, no. That's a really good question as well. No, it's not. Only for January. In January, you will be able to see it. Then I expect you to be able to do it on your own. Well, not on your own. I expect you to be able to do it and you can get help from me. You can also get help from our tutor, Bethany. She couldn't be here tonight, but Bethany is the embedded tutor in the class and she will be very present during the entire case study. She'll also be posting some tips and, and information for you after this meeting. So there's gonna be lots of help available. She's available more often than I am, so it'll be easier. Taylor? Will you be putting up like checkers before no. the next case study drops? Nope. You're on your own here. You can do it. Trust yourself. What you have to learn how to do is look at your financial statements and see if something looks wrong. If you have negatives on your financial statements, with the exception of a couple of accounts, it's wrong, right? You don't have negative income. You don't have negative revenue. You don't have negative expenses. So if that's the case, and I think you'll pick up on that doing the first month. So the January case study, I essentially walk you through the whole thing. I give you check figures. I tell you exactly what to do, exactly what it should look like. Let's go through that and before we um, go any further with question. Can you hold off, Kayam? Okay, let's go through this. We're not going to, you don't have to enter addresses, you don't have to enter invoices, you don't have to enter bills, you're gonna enter checks. You're not going to use the payroll function. This is really important. Do not use the payroll function because it'll trigger a, a subscription and that's not what we're doing here. This company uses an outside payroll service, and this is very common with small employers. They pay ADP or paychecks or somebody to do their stuff, and they get reports. You will be entering payroll as a journal entry. So you will not have any payroll. You will also, and this is another extremely important point, you will not use the sales tax function because we're operating in 2018 and QuickBooks Online doesn't allow you to set rates. It picks it automatically based on the current rate for the current locale. So we're going to bypass the sales tax function. You know how you did an invoice in QuickBooks and it automatically added sales tax because you set up sales tax? Just don't set up sales tax, okay? Um, the other thing that you will be doing in here is you will be preparing payroll quarterly reports. Normally, if you have an outside payroll company, they do the reports for you. However, I need to know that you can do quarterly reports at this stage of your college education, having taken QuickBooks or having taken payroll. So I'm going to ask you to do re qu uh, quarterly reports. Bethany will be hosting a review session for those before they're due probably once it opens. So you'll have two sets of quarterlies, once in March and once in June. The, in, the discussion board becomes extremely important in this class because you might have questions. You will have questions. You cannot complete the case study without asking questions. And this is typically true if you have clients. You run across something, you don't know who the check's written to, you can't read the name. You don't know what it's for. You have to ask the client. 
So you're going to use the discussion board as an ask the client or instructor, either one. Don't be afraid to Google the names that you see checks written to and determine what it's for. You know this is a restaurant. So if they purchase something from some company that is a food purveyor, then you know it's food. When you're finished with a month, you upload the documents to be graded, and there's a list of those, and I'll get to that in a second. After they're graded, you'll, you'll receive back corrected financials. You can start doing data entry for the following month. Just make sure you correct your prior month before you turn in the next month. Does that make sense? Okay, questions now before I proceed to the next section. Kayam? Will they be graded um, monthly? Yes. Yes. I will grade it every, every time you turn in a monthly assignment, I will grade it and get it back to you so you can do the next month. Okay. So that's the general information and start here section. Taylor? So if we submit it and then you send it back with feedback, are we allowed to correct it or is it like a one-time shot? It's a one-time shot for grading, but you can correct it. You have to correct it in your books. No more than you to get one submission on this. That's it. Um, unless it's something really silly. If it's really silly, something you did, um, then I will allow you one time to fix it. Like you gave me a report with an incorrect date, which is very common. One time on that. Dates are important. Okay. Now we're going to move on to, these are all numbered in the order you need to do them. I've also put down here in this other section, well, not one through five, two through five. I've also put these instructions in PDF format so you can actually download them. However, there are links in these instructions, and obviously the links don't download. So first you start your new company. You will get an invitation from me after this class, like I said. You're going to be adding this company to your Intuit account. You will still have your other company, but you will add this one in, in addition to that one. You're going to name it bakery and restaurant with your name and the instructions will be in the email as well. Please don't name it anything else. Don't name it in any other format because that's what I see and I need to be able to identify who it belongs to. And this will tell you what to do once you get logged into your account, the setups you need to do. And I know that some of you, um, to some of you like to use account numbers. Is there anybody in this class that likes to use account numbers? I do. Yeah, so some people are really really used to doing that. That's fine. You can choose to use those. Just be sure to turn them off before you print your reports to turn in. Okay. All right. And there's some other things here that you can take a look at. Let's move on to number two after you start your new company. You're going to set up your chart of accounts. Now, I don't care how you do this. Type it in, import it, do whatever you want. But follow the instructions. This area here, this link gives you the document. Oh, and I did not give it to you in Excel. So I don't want you to import it. I remember that now because that caused a lot of issues. The things that are highlighted here are areas where students make mistakes continually. We have a heading account called restaurant inventory. Nothing is ever posted to that heading account. These are sub accounts for the restaurant inventory. The name of this account is baskets and boxes. The name of it is not restaurant inventory colon basket and boxes and it says that here 
And be sure on the sales tax payable, do not use the detail type sales tax payable because we're bypassing the sales tax function. Just read all of the things in yellow that are highlighted and make sure your sub accounts are named appropriately, not with this whole name, because when the chart of accounts prints, it includes the heading in the title and you don't want to have it in there twice. Once you get all of your chart of accounts in, we'll want to enter your beginning balances. The uh, client's bookkeeper has given us a trial balance at 1231.17. We're going to start doing the books in, tw in 2018. The CPA has used the trial balance to create separate, separate journal, two separate journal entries for you to enter. There's a reason for two separate entries, and that is because we need to keep the bank balance separated into cleared and uncleared items, and the unclear need to be entered individually so we can maintain the integrity of the reconciliation function. So I've given you the opening journal entries. On all of these things, when you open them, you'll want to, and I have them set up so they download. You'll want to download it and make sure that you look at both journal entries. So there's two journal entries in here. When you're finished entering your beginning balances, you're going to want to look at this balance sheet as of 1231.17 and make sure you enter these 1231.17 and make sure it balances. Make sure it's exactly the same. The account names are the same. The amounts are the same. This is your foundation. If you get this wrong, everything else will be wrong. Okay, well, let's back up. So you have your beginning balances in. You wanna enter your sales items. I've given you a list for import here. And you'll note that I have this this thing here, this paragraph here, any errors in this area will cause huge problems later. I think some of you have run into this when you were working in the textbook. So I've given you an example of what it should look like here. And you can import it. And then when it, you know, when it, when you import, it gives you a chance to fix things. And things that have an ampersand in them, you know what an ampersand is, right? It's the and sign. Come import very strangely. So be careful, you have to correct those. So you imported or entered, and you can just enter them. You don't have to import. If you're uncomfortable importing, just add them. So after you enter your sales items, we're ready to start January. This page is extensive. It's very long. It has a lot of links in it. And it has a lot of detailed instruction. Every single month that you get will have something called specific instructions. In this case, you open the specific instructions for January. And this is what you get every month. But then I walk you through how to do it step by step. Every month you'll get an, a list of things to do in the order they should be done. I've given you a, a blank box so you could print this out and check these off as you do them. These items down here that are numbered are what you will actually turn in as an assignment. Follow these instructions exactly for what you turn in. You will have a cover sheet for the client explaining what to do with the attached documents. You always give a client a cover sheet. You don't ever just give them stuff. You have to tell them what to do with it. Um, and I have an example of a cover sheet in a different section. You want the P&L and balance sheet for the month in Excel in the same Excel document, not separate documents. You want the sales tax for the month fill, filled out and ready to go. You'll want the bank reconciliation 
printout, which is a summary, and that's in PDF form. You'll want that ready to go. The journal entries, just the ones you made, not the entire journal. And there's hints on that in Bethany's hints and tips. And that needs to be in the same file as the P&L and balance sheet. So you will have one Excel sheet with three items in it, three tabs. You will have a Word document and you will have a PDF document for the bank reconciliation and a PDF document for the sales tax form. I do not want to see any handwritten sales tax forms. I have a sales tax form on this in the course here, I want you to use that one. Don't go to the Arizona Department of Revenue and download one because this one's from 2018. You need to use the 2018 version. And if you, if you download it correctly as a PDF, not in Chrome, but as a PDF, it will auto-calculate when you put the numbers in. If it doesn't auto-calculate for you, reach out to one of us, Bethany or myself, and we'll help you figure it out. Every month you will have this information down here. You will find yourself asking a question in the discussion board and I'll say, did you check the information I gave you? Because there's things in here that answer some of your questions each month. You're also given the ending physical inventory every month you will need to make an adjustment for that. Again, all of these steps I'm going to walk you through. But be aware that this is an important document each month. You should download it, print it, and use it. Refer to it often. And so if we follow this document, it says to enter daily sales first. Over here, I've got number one, enter daily sales from the January daily sales sheets. You click on this link, you download the document. You follow the instructions exactly. Don't skip anything. Number two, enter the check stubs, enter the checks, follow the directions. Julia, are you at Northwest Campus? And is Ken giving you grief? Not yet, but he's doing my homework without me, or my work without me. <laughs> Tell him to leave you alone. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you have all of the things in here with links to the documents. When I ask you to do something in here, after you do it, there's going to be a link of a completed set. So you can check yours against the completed ones. Does that make sense? So you're not on your own in January. You have specific instructions and you have the solutions. So after you enter January data and follow all the directions, you will then submit your case study. I will tell you this, before you ever submit any case study, you should always review your P&L and review your balance sheet carefully to look for any possible errors, things that don't make sense, negative numbers where there should not be negative numbers. We know accumulated depreciation is a contra account and it's a negative number. That's okay. We know that if a shareholder takes withdraws money from the company, that will be a negative number. That's okay. Any other negative numbers are not okay. Let's see. There's also a useful form section here where it gives a sample of the monthly client letter. It has the instructions for the TPT or the sales tax form. It also has a PDF document for the sales tax form. And then it has the quarterly reports, which you won't have to address until March case study. The discussions are graded now. Up until now, they were not graded. So now they're graded. And Bethany, the tutor, has already posted her discussion in here. 
her tips and tricks. Um, I would recommend that you go to the case study discussions and you subscribe to them. See how this, you can actually go to the final case study area. I think you can subscribe to everything at once. Yes. So if you click subscribe and send me an instant notification, it will send you an email every time somebody posts something and it'll say in the email what the post was. So you can scan it quickly, know that whether you need to pay attention to it or not. Try not to duplicate posts. If you have a question, look and see if it's already been posted because we get hundreds of posts during this. Sometimes it's really hard to find anything. So I am subscribed to instant notifications and Bethany will be as well. When I can't answer, she will. She's usually really quick about answering questions. If you know the answer, answer it for your classmate. But pay close attention to the case study discussions. They are critical to your success in this portion. Okay, I think, Cindy. Yeah, since you said they're going to be graded now, do we have like a rubric or a minimum that we have to do? Yes, we do. Um, there's a rubric right here on each one. And that rubric will tell you three or more questions or responses. Which is not going to be hard, trust me. And that's why I'm telling you to answer your classmates questions if you can because you'll get points for that and I'm not super strict on on discussions but I do want you to participate um, because you can't get it correct without asking questions it's not possible and speaking of rubrics I, I realized there's one thing that I didn't get when we get into the February case study um, the January case study and Taylor, this goes back to your question. Do you get different submission attempts? January, yes. I will email or I will send you feedback and say, fix this and resubmit and I'll give you full credit. But only in January. When you get to February, um, oops, no, that's not where I want it to be. Let's just take a look back here. So when you move on to February, what happens is you're given the February instructions. You're given all the information, the documents that I had linked in January, but you're given all those documents. You're given the case study discussion, the submission, and a grading rubric. So you will know exactly how I will grade it. I will actually return this rubric to you with the number of points you received in each area. Unless you got 100%, then I won't bother, right? <laughs> And, and you will, you, you will at some point, and you, you might for February even. It seems like it's an impossible task when you first begin. And Bethany references this in her um, discussion. Let's just take a look at the last item in her, her post because it's quite humorous. Um, oh, she didn't post it yet. But there's an item in there about a student last semester who, after doing January, said that he determined he was making less than minimum wage per hour for doing this work, <laughs> which is really true in January. But then he posted again by April and said he was making good money now. <laughs> so there's a learning curve. If you get stuck, do so. Say you do January, you did everything right, and you start February, and you don't know where to, you don't know what to do. Go back to January's instructions. Follow them. Of course, don't use January's data, but follow the instructions. Great questions. Anybody else have a question? The last thing I want to say then is this. Um. The assignments, January is not due until March 9th. 
That seems like a long time, right? <laughs> no, it's not. You need to start now because it takes a long time to get through the first set. It will take less time to get through the, it'll actually, you have more time for February because I'm not giving you the instructions. And that will seem like it's a long time, but it's not. You have less and less time as you go along because you won't need it. I can tell you that I can do a month's worth of accounting for this company in an hour. That's your goal. Correctly. <laughs> You can do it. There's lots of tips and tricks to doing this data entry because you're doing data entry. Um, you're entering sales receipts. You can memorize a sales receipt and use the same one and just change the amounts. Make sure your sales receipt, when you do a sales receipt in QuickBooks, it, go, it goes to undeposited funds. You will never put anything directly to the bank account. And it says that in the instructions several different places. Okay, I think that's all I have for you. Questions? Taylor. Will I get another invitation? Like, was that your practice in my email or will I get another one? That's the real one for you. Okay. But if you need me to resend it, I can always resend it. But I think you should be fine. Yeah, no, I saw it. I just didn't know what you did with it. So I didn't. Yeah, know I did nothing it. with it. I was practicing on Taylor to make sure it went out okay. She wasn't paying attention to her schoolwork. So I was able to practice without her getting all panicked. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. She told me she was working. She she didn't have time to look at her schoolwork. So go ahead and do whatever I wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have questions? Um, the, the case study is fun. Enjoy it. You'll have a different way of doing things. Um, it's not following the book. It's based on your knowledge of being able to manipulate around QuickBooks Online. Travis? Um, would you say there's any month in particular that's harder? Does it get progressively harder month by month? No, it gets progressively easier because you're doing the same thing every month. Mm. So February is probably going to be the hardest month for you because you will have been guided through January and then you're just going to be given all the documents for February, right? And then March might be a little more difficult because you'll have to do quarterly reports if you're not familiar with those. Just make sure you attend the um, tutoring session Bethany will hold for that if you're not familiar with quarterlies. Gotcha. Thanks. Sure. Liv? Hello. Is that tutoring uh, going to be, or that session from the tutor set going to be in the evening also? Like around yes, this time? She she does evenings and weekends as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Catalina? You're muted, Catalina. Okay, sorry. That's okay. So during the book, you said that it was not a good idea, like if you got so messed up to like delete it and try to do it again. Is this the same way? So if I get like really messed up? Stop. If you get really messed up, stop and reach out to Bethany or me. Okay, so still don't delete the no, stuff. Just, no. Okay. Unless okay. you know what you're doing, deleting things is not mm -hmm. a good option. Okay. Okay. Um, if you reconcile a bank account and something's wrong and you have to fix it, I can unreconcile bank accounts for you and you can redo them. You can't oh, unreconcile okay. them, but I can. So okay. all you have to do is email me and say, Hey, I messed up on the bank reconciliation. Can you please unreconcile? And I'll do that for you. Okay. Okay. Good questions. Anybody else? Okay. That's all I have for you. Thank you for coming and enjoy the case study. And if you need me, reach out. Thank you. Have a Thank good you. evening. Bye.